Gary Cooper ruins this movie. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but it's true. I'm a huge fan of High Noon. I like Gary Cooper, but Gary, this ain't it. Morocco is another collaboration between Joseph von Sternberg and Marlena Dietrich. Marlena Dietrich. Marlena Dietrich. <laughs> Getting released in the same year as their film, The Blue Angel, a film which I loved, and so I had high hopes going into this one. Spoilers ahead. We open on a group of French foreign legionnaires marching into town after returning from a campaign, and we meet Gary or Tom Brown, if you want to be technical about things. At the same time, we meet Amy Jolly. I, that's probably, I don't think that's how you say her name. I think it's Jolie, Je, Emma Jolie, but I'm gonna say Amy Jolly and I'm never gonna say it again throughout this video, so don't worry about it. Who is an embittered performer who turns down the advances of the wealthy La Bessière? Amy becomes a performer in a nightclub. Hmm. Sounds familiar. Where she meets Tom and after some playful back and forth, slips him the key to her room. That night, the two connect over their shared jadedness. You've got a lot of pictures with that man. Your husband? Husband? I never found a man good enough for that. That's just the way I feel about women. Neither of their histories are ever made explicit, but it's clear that they are both running from their past, avoiding their past. They have dark pasts. Hurtful pasts. It's very kind of Casablanca-esque. Anyway, while all of this is going on, we find out that Tom has been having an affair with, this, with a superior officer's wife, and on the same night he turns down her advances, she sends some locals to rough him up. But Tom seriously injures the men that the superior officer's wife sends to rough him up. And when he's pulled in front of his commanding officers, the one who Tom is having an affair with his wife, the commanding officer makes it known that he knows about the affair. I appreciate your attempt to keep the name of my wife out of this. Tom thinks that the superior officer is gonna get him, so he asks Amy to run away with him, and she agrees. However, all this time, Le Vessier, remember him from the boat? He's been making his interest in Amy known in proposes. My offer is highly respectable. Marriage. She turns him down, but Tom hears the proposal and decides, in an attempt to allow Amy to have a better life, to leave her and go back to the Foreign Legion, come what may. When Amy goes to say goodbye, she sees a group of women following the troop and asks Le Bessier about them. Who are those women? Those women? I would call them the rear guard. How can they keep pace with the men? Sometimes they catch up with them, and sometimes they don't. And very often when they do, they find their men dead. Those women must be mad. I don't know. You see, they love their men. Foreshadowing. Amy, heartbroken, decides, why not? I'll shack up with this rich guy. He seems nice. Even though her heart really isn't in it, Tom's commanding officer does try to kill him, but he gets killed first. Tom comes back to town. Amy tracks him down and confronts him, but Tom stands firm in his position to let Amy have a better life. But Amy finds a carving on a table Tom made, and so she knows he loves her. And so remember those ladies following the troop? Amy becomes one of them. Follows Tom out into the desert. I was not a fan of Morocco, with a bunch of caveats. Marlena Dietrich is incredible. In this and the Blue Angel, she plays these characters that are performers who, when they come out on stage, they immediately command the attention of the audience. When they're in a room with people, they immediately command the attention of everyone in the, who they're in the room with. And it is the same thing she's doing to us as moviegoers. She makes you lean forward. She's sexy, but she's also a little scary. She looks like she might knock you out at any minute. And there's also always something going on behind that tough exterior, some kind of secret that you want to be let in on. And that's why Gary Cooper just cannot hang. To me, he just seems too young and too dopey, where Marlena Dietrich seems like she's been through some stuff. Gary Cooper looks like he's just pretending to have gone through some stuff. He's like a, an emo version. Handsome. He's a handsome guy. But you expect me to believe Marlena Dietrich is going to follow that guy out into the desert? Ah. I don't know about that. Other thing I enjoyed about the film is that Joseph von Sternberg knows what he's doing behind the camera. There is a lot of great tension-filled scene work, even with Gary. The iconic scene with Dietrich in the tuxedo is great, and the final shot is stunning. Sternberg lingers on that final image of her walking out into the desert and really lets you sit in it and really feel its impact. I wish I felt more of an impact, but there's no denying the craft. However, throughout the rest of the film, there were a lot of moments that just felt like endless bits of silence, which isn't bad if there are moments of 
tension, meaningful, purposeful silence. But to me, I was just, okay. Okay, come on, let's go. Which is strange because I also felt like the film was too short. This feels like a three hour epic condensed into 90 minutes. It never feels like we get to, they get together too fast. They're these two wounded, jaded people who need time to kind of trust each other to get into this kind of relationship, to get into this kind of entanglement. And then we don't really get to see them spend any real time apart. Her coming to terms with her life without him, him going back to fight and slowly falling apart without her. It's all there, but it feels rushed. It feels more like telling us rather than making us feel it. And I can't believe I'm saying this because I love 90 minute movies, but this one, this feels like there was a great movie in there somewhere around two and a half hours. <laughs> I guess that's just my problem with the film. I just don't buy it. I don't think it's a bad arc for this competent woman to be so overcome with love for this man that she ends up giving up everything and following him out into the desert. But I never bought it because Gary Hooper, no way. And because the film never gives us enough time to really make us feel that transition. The transition from Marlena Dietrich in that tuxedo to Marlena Dietrich following Gary Cooper out into the desert. I need more time. And one final huge caveat is that this film is impossible to find. There is a Dietrich Sternberg Criterion box set, but I can't just justify spending a hundred bucks on a set to watch one movie that I had never seen before. So I resorted to some uh, <clears throat> less than ethical means to watch it and it wasn't the best quality. So I'm willing to take back everything I've just said after I get my hands on a nice Blu-ray copy of this film. It very well could have been my viewing experience more than the actual film itself. I am going to try to get a better copy of it and rewatch at some point in my life. And I will give it another chance because I really do love the Blue Angel. And if you wanna hear me talk about that film, film, you can click that right there. Click that right there. Did I just say words? Did you hear words coming out of my mouth just now? Cause I'm not 100% sure that that was words. Goodbye.